Hey everybody and welcome to the next episode of Adam and Simon Bullshit Busters. I'm Simon Batchelor. I'm Adam Bastock. And this week we are talking about devices. We are today going to be looking at where people use their devices most when they're looking at your website. Are they sat in the office looking at it on a desktop or are they on their phones travelling somewhere scrolling on the move? So... This is video number four of a five-part series on how to measure website success. So if you want to watch the other episodes first to find out a bit more about the other top three metrics that you can use to measure website success, then go back and check out the previous episodes. I will put a link to the previous episodes above us right now, so you can click that to get to the previous episodes. So in this episode, we are going to be looking at mobile versus desktop. So Adam, do you want to give us a quick breakdown of the difference, I guess, between this traffic and um, maybe a little bit about where we would find this in Google Analytics? Yeah, so I think just to start off with, I think your introduction was really good there in that it's highlighting where people are using these your dev these devices. It's not necessarily just looking at the device itself. It's about this report will give you a bit more empathetic understanding of what people are doing and, and how they're using um, your website. So there's a report in analytics called devices, and then, then that splits down by, I think, browser and then kind of uh, operating system, maybe. Um, yes. We can ignore those for now, because basically yep. we just want to look at devices. We just want to see what people are on. And so that report is very simple, and it splits it into three categories, tablet, desktop, mobile. Yeah. Fairly obvious, um, but it's a real, really good way to kind of see the percentage, the percentage split of how people are using your website. So, in the past couple of years, we've seen a lot more around kind of Google first indexing and a lot of noise around kind of uh, mobile devices and how all websites need to be user friendly on mobile, mm -hmm. which is of course correct and and true. However, I think this has stolen the thunder a little bit in businesses actually understanding and kind of looking at that data and saying, how are people using our website? And let's make sure we're building the website around them as well. So one of my clients we've been working um, with are kind of in the B2B sector. And, and even now, the majority of their customer base are sat in warehouses, are sat mm. in offices, um, browsing their website at, at a computer. They are not on their mobiles. We are starting to see that change in that people are starting to use it in more mobile, um, kind of on site as they're wandering around. But typically, it's mostly desktop users. And I think that's something that surprised... Well, I, didn't, I don't think it surprised the business, but I think it has surprised a lot of mm. the people who are giving them advice, saying we need to be mobile first, we need to kind of focus on advertising on mobile, just when that wasn't really the case, because that's not how people are using the website. So that's why I want to bring it back to what you said at the start, Simon, of just are they sat on the train commuting to work and they're browsing looking for a sofa, yeah. or are they sat in a, in a cold, drafty warehouse somewhere and they're, you know trying to, to purchase a bubble wrap for the next e-commerce shipment. Yeah. Um, I mean, we find as an agency, our split is 80% desktop, 20% mobile. Exactly. And so it's just that when, when you're taking decisions to, to build that conversion rate, lead gen form, and when you're testing and when you're looking at even advertising on when you're running ads, mm -hmm. do you bother running them on mobile? Um, it's such an important report to look at and just challenge your assumptions, I think, and just challenge yeah. the industry assumptions of... Oh, look at this shiny new device that everyone's on. Well, um, I think you get the device implies the context, the context of the search. Yeah. So, for example, we have a client who does um, residential fencing. So we run yeah. an ad on mobile, which is for damaged fencing. Now, that yeah. um, page is designed to be about this long on a mobile. It's, is your fence damaged? Do you want a quote? Fill in a form. And yeah. it's a tiny, tiny mobile mobile page. Because if you've got a damaged fence, more than likely you're stood in front of it on your phone. Yeah. And you're like, oh, Go damaged oh, fence. Shit. You're going to Google damaged fence. Bam, the ad comes up, page goes up, and you've got the phone number at the top, which is click to call, and you've got your form straight away. Yeah. If we compare that to garden design fencing or landscape fencing, which is the other end, that is almost all desktop traffic. 
So what we yeah. do with that page is that page has loads of big images on it and it's all designed to catch the eye and be the lifestyle cell because that is all desktop and tablet. It's the sofa scrolling. So yeah. even just thinking about it from that point of view, we can tell what devices we need to cater for when we're thinking about the pages. So this report goes beyond just an interest of like, oh, loads of people use my site on a phone. That's, that, that's great. That is interesting. But what does it tell you about that page? So mm. one thing I see a lot is people who design their sites on a desktop and never check it on their phone because they're like, well, why would I check my website on a phone? I can see it on my desktop. It's right there because they're at yeah. work. But they never like get their phone out and go to their own website until maybe they're showing someone. And then they're like, oh, yeah, here's my website. And they start scrolling and they're like, my website's really long. Like, <laughs> Actually, I don't know if I'd scroll through this. Then they go and look at the analytics, perhaps, and they realize that actually 60, 70% of their website visitors could be on a phone. Yeah. I mean, it's a terrible experience. So I think my sort of key takeaway from the desktop versus mobile graph is use this to inform you site-wide, firstly site-wide, about your general split. Are you phone or are you desktop? The, the graph will tell you then that's going to give you an idea of the context of what people are doing. So if you sell a long consideration purchase, rule of thumb, it's probably going to be leaning a bit more desktop than mobile, but let the data tell you. And then what I would say is you need to go and drill down into your landing pages. So mm. on the pages you want people to convert, that is crucial. If you're getting a massive mobile swing, so maybe 90% mobile, especially if you're running Facebook or Instagram ads, that page needs to literally be three scrolls long. Even three scrolls is probably too much. You want two scrolls tops. That needs to be the mm -hmm. limit of that page. If you haven't designed that page like that, don't worry. Just make a new page that's really, really short and then send your ads there. But let the data tell you what devices are using that page. Yeah, I don't think I want to add anything else to that, really. I think that's a really good summary of just how to use that report and how to look into it. and. and... Yeah, don't get too caught up in in other advice that's industry standard because yes, you're you're running a you're running your business. You're not running an industry. Yeah, um, yeah. and just focus on what that data tells you, and maybe compare it year on year as well if you want to look at trends because yeah. it might be that you're suddenly seeing a, an increase in desktop or a decrease mm. in desktop or, or whatever. So, I think yeah, have a look at it. Don't don't tie yourself up too much around other things, but use that report to just inform your decisions and be more empathetic to, to what your users are doing when you're building landing pages. Yeah, and I think if you've been uh, super keen and listened to episode two all about goals and you've got your goals set up, yes. you can compare goal conversion to device. So you may yes. find that your goal conversion on mobile is like 1%. Your goal conversion on desktop is 80 90% that's going to tell you that your form doesn't work on mobile. Exactly. You can spot really big gaps and this uh, with, with just the data. You don't even need to load it up and test it. You can just see it from the data. So, again, um, we'll link back to the goals video above if, if you haven't checked out that video yet, but then you'll understand a little bit more about why it's important to, to, to get all this stuff linked up. So, yeah, go into analytics. I think for most people, the mobile desktop split is just on the dashboard of analytics. I think if you just scroll down to the bottom, the split is generally there. If it's not, it's going to be in devices. Or again, go to the analytics search bar, not the top, top search bar, but in the analytics page and just type in mobile traffic or desktop traffic or mobile desktop. It'll come up in the search and show you. Um, and then once you've got that graph in front of you, think, right, if I'm the user... Where am I standing, sitting, doing? What am I doing when I come to your web page? And see whether your expectation, your imagination of that user matches the data. If it doesn't, maybe you need to reassess what your user's doing and their, the context for their search. Absolutely. So that brings us to an end of mobile versus desktop. If you would like to join us for the next episode, then hit subscribe. We are going to be looking at first time versus returning traffic next episode. So you can get a notification of when that episode launches. To do that, you just need to hit follow or subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. You'll get notified as soon as the next video goes live. 
if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then why not hit follow? And you'll, again, get a lovely notification as soon as the episode goes live. Thank you very much for listening and watching, everybody, and join us next time for episode five, the final part of our top analytics series. Okay, so until next time, see you later. Bye. Just drop the job. I'm a Simon.